Hi guys, thank you very much for joining. Welcome back. You won't know how many times I've tried to, I've stopped and started this video. It's so confusing. The, the body and the content of this video is really confusing. And it's confusing because actually there, there's a bit of a crossover here. Um, it's kind of stepping on the toes of what the content of the Dutch firm finale was supposed to be. The Dutch, there's an, I've got an idea for the Dutch firm finale. It's always been there. I already know how it's going to go. I just need to get it sorted out and recorded. Okay. There's a series one, two, three, and four. The four, the fourth is the finale, and there's a body of content in it. And I know exactly what it is that's going in and where and how. And it's a good video, and you'll have heard all the way through these videos, if you follow in, you'll have heard, I personally believe something happened with Pat and the Dutch firm, and the, 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 the events leading up to those meetings, and the events leading up to their deaths, I personally believe has something to do with the Dutch firm. Okay, that's the finale. The body, there's so much more detail to go in it. Like I say, it's a good video. Uh, and it actually contributes the other three parts. And it is actually a good finale. However, since the ending of the third part, <laughs> other things have come to light. It's my own fault. I should have just got on with that finale and did it. There wouldn't be any of these problems now. But since the, the, the finish of the third part and reading through... Some of the other bits and the other videos that come to light, there are details that actually could go into the finale, which actually changes the body and the concept of the finale, if that makes any sense. Okay, there's a, a plan for the body and the content of the finale, but other things have now been seen and, and found that actually could change the whole thing. And personally, I'm actually fighting my own personal thoughts and feelings about whether I believe what I was going to put into the finale because of these other things that have come to light. If that's not confusing, I don't know what it is. I'm confused. I, the, the, what I'm talking about now, here, in this video, actually should go into the finale. And what originally was going to be the finale could actually go into a different other video. But if that was to happen, the other three won't make sense. So I've made the decision to keep that series as it was going to be and make this. However, once I've made this and put this out, this is actually going to demote the, uh, the, the quality of that Dutch Firm series. So first of all, I need to apologise about that. It's a bit of a, like I say, it's a bit confusing. The Dutch Firm finale is or was going to be uh, another one of those videos uh, and another series that states this is what I think happened I've made a couple of those videos there's one called this is what I think happened this evening if you haven't seen it go and have a look there's a follow-on to that called I still think a lot of people went up to watch the killings and then there's the the Noi collection uh, which all insert the statement from myself saying this is what I personally believe happened it's for these reasons the finale was going to be another one of those I'm, again like you know me I change my mind about all of these different events all the time and so it's only it's no coincidence that I'm going to change, it's changed again, it's inevitable that it was going to change again, and it has, the, the Dutch firm finale was another one of those, however, this that I'm talking about today is another one of those, this is what I think happened, I hope you understand that, if you don't, don't ask me, I don't know either, okay, let's just get on with it, it stops and started this so many times you won't believe it. But I've been, I've been itching to get it out because, again, like I say, this is probably the, the closest to what happened that we're ever going to get. 
or you know i mean if you if you are in agreement with some of the things i say and some of my outlooks and my points of view then you know you'll you'll believe this too you know i know there are a number of people who agree with quite a lot of the things i'm saying although i do honestly i need to keep stressing that none of what i'm saying is sh should be construed as the truth i don't know i wasn't there but honestly, when you see this, it's like, oh my god, how didn't we see that? Right. Have you... So, throughout the history of making these videos, we've been trying to look at what happened to Tony Pound Craig, yeah? On the basis that Mick and Jack are innocent, what happened to Tony Pound Craig? That's the concept. I don't know if it's the same for you guys, but because there absolutely most definitely seems to be an alternate ending to the demise of Tony Pound Craig that actually pushes the uh, the story that got them locked up out the way I don't know if that's the same with anybody else personally I don't buy what happened I, I, I don't believe what the, the story that got them into trouble and got them put inside I simply don't believe it so I haven't been looking at it I haven't been thinking that that's the truth it's so far in the distance that it's, you know, it, it's one of those, it's like, that didn't happen, it's in the bin, it's over there. Which then obviously gives us extra room to try and work out other angles and other ways to which could have gone, what to that evening could have gone. It's a good little thing, it's a good laugh to do it, the interest is mega. It's a blast doing it. I mean, it's you honestly. I, I I recommend anybody who has that creative energy to get on it, get on it, and do it, and do what, say whatever you think. Just don't rob my work and then pass it off as your own or anybody else's of that matter. But whatever you do, the, you'll find that the, the, this whole story is rife with theories, ideas, different ideas about what happened, and that's because. It's a mystery. The, the mystery has been created because we're asking that question, if Mick and Jack are innocent, what happened? That, that, that's the question. Even the question, what happened, is a, a mystery, isn't it? It's asking what that mystery is. What happened is that, that pinnacle and that body of mystery. What happened? Nobody knows, so let's look at it. What could have happened? And if it didn't happen that way, then, you know, push that out the way. Don't even think about looking at it. Let's find some alternate ways that could have happened. That's basically what we do. Right. One of the reasons that could be one the reason why none of these theories are actually going anywhere. They seem to fizzle out cul-de-sac ideas you know what i mean they, they they they're good ideas turn a few corners lift a few stones you know what i mean like open a few of those cans of worms but they seem to fizzle out they don't go anywhere uh, you know it seems to be what happens with this story one of those reasons why that happens could be that the way it happened is the way it said it went down now you know me you've been following these this isn't what i'm interested in you know what i mean i'm not interested in this story that is said to have got them locked up something else happened that's the way it goes that's what i firmly believe or believed could it be that the reason why all of these theories and ideas don't work is because what happened is what happened. What is said to have happened is what happened. Okay, this is what is uh, was said to have happened, okay? It all spawned from this dud cannabis deal. Mick, Nichols, apparently Jack, Tucker... And Rolf, right, Pat was in prison at this point. From the documents we've got, we've got documents and proof and documentation in black and white that all of those people, Mick, Nichols, Tucker and Rolf, 
got involved in importing cannabis. It was, I think, the third of the four that Darren Nichols is talking about in his statement under oath. He did one. It went well. He did another trip. That was fine. The third trip was with Tucker and Rolf's money. That went well. He actually returned that cannabis. It was all pucker and above board and everything went well. Then Pat Tate got out of prison and they went to do another one and this was the dud cannabis deal. Okay. They paid for it up front and then it fucked up. The uh, the details of all of that is in the Dutch Firm series 1, 2 and 3. Go and have a look if you don't know those details. The... The deal left Pat Tate in a bit of uh, a bit of a, a stupor, really, because he had borrowed his money to pay for it, and obviously the deal fucked up. So he couldn't pay back his investors, and uh, if you can't pay back your investors, you can see the trouble you're in. So there's arguments. We need that money back and mick said he can't get it initially and then uh, eventually got back in touch with the dutch firm who said yeah okay we'll get it back we'll give you all the money back basically and that's it they all of them mick jack and uh peter corey i think went as well as pat hate craig rolf and three women to pick their money back up off the dutch firm after Mick had gone across to sort it all out. He, Mick was the one who sorted the money repayment back. Everything's fine. All the money's paid back. And uh, then Pat's in trouble. Pat, We see that like there's a highlight of the trouble that Pat's in. Because apparently he's now lying to his investors. Saying that Mick didn't get his money back. And... Uh, Pat starts threatening that he's going to kill Mick because he hasn't paid his money back. And then Mick finds out about these threats and eventually kills Tony, Pat and Craig. It would seem he's killed Tucker and Rolf out of sheer spite. He claims that they, they had to die because they were nasty. But that's neither here nor there. That's what happened. That's the in a, in in a bottle. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, that's the that's the story that got them locked up. So then enter us, saying that they're innocent. Blah blah blah. Moving on, looking at all these different ideas, all these different theories, and actually not looking at that as what happened. Let me explain what I mean. I know that's going to be a bit difficult to understand. The, the, the body, the content of this video, and this is another what I think happened, okay? That, that happened there with that dud cannabis, is what happened. But, there's a, there's a massive twist and a, lap, and a turn here, obviously, because Mick and Jack are innocent. This is where it, it's twists and turns. Everything you've just heard happened. In, in this theory, this is what I think happened, yeah, sorry if I'm going off track here, it's really difficult, this is, okay, that is what happened, but Mick and Jack are innocent, okay, let me explain, first of all, let me tell you how this idea came about, or this realisation, we should say, really, uh, I was, one, I wanted to do a little bit more dig in on Jason Vella and I put into Google Jason Vella and the drop down menu in the drop down menu there was Drake Jason Vella's death so I was thinking hang on a minute that ain't that ain't true he's not dead is he so I clicked it and in the list in Google that came up there was this article in the independent newspaper it's dated Saturday the 24th of January which is three days or uh, four days after the, uh, the, the the conviction of Mick and Jack so if you cast your minds back to that date this the these store the story of Mick and Jack being arrested and being locked up is big news it's in the newspapers it's on the it's on the mainstream TV news 
And the newspapers are making good money out of it, basically. They're reporting the convictions. However, the bodies and the content of the stories go through exactly the same thing. We've seen it all before. There's actually nothing new in the content of these articles anymore. What's being written in here is it's been written a thousand times in other publications. And you'll see what I mean. You know, the, the going through this article itself, it mentions it seems like they do their best to try and make it a little bit different. Like they've got more detail now. They can say a little bit more here. But it all comes back to this one thing. You see, they're trying to implement uh, a bit of uh, Kenny Noy into this now. Um, there's, they mentioned Kenny Noy. They've even got the craze in here now. East End villains, you know, they're, they're kind of trying to attach Essex to London. And who's in London? It's the craze. So let's beef this story up a little bit. There you go, look. Kenny Noy, Brinks Matt Laundra. Charlie Cray, Valence Road. Basically, they're just trying to bulk this up to make a better story than the same old shit that they've been publicising over the last couple of years. Villainry, you know what I mean? They're making this about gangs. And then eventually it does turn into ours, uh, our story. The murder of three men at Rettendon, Essex was over drugs. The victims, Pat Tate, Tony Tucker, Craig Rolf. You see what I mean? They kind of, they have to beef it up a little bit to make it attractive. Then slow, it just gets back into this story that they have already written loads and loads of times. It's all about this ecstasy. You see what I mean? Leah Betts, go start talking about Leah Betts then. She was a policeman's daughter. Blah, blah, blah. It gets a little bit boring. The difference between this and the the other two years before is that actually now they're reporting that these two people, Mick and Jack, have actually been arrested. They've actually been sentenced now. It's the only difference. The story's the same, other than that, that they've now been uh, they've now been sentenced. So I was flicking through this. It gets down. You know, like I mean, you you know, if you're following these and doing the research you'll notice that it's all the same so i was what i was looking at this and just flicking through it and this is where the idea came from for this video and it was a, another holy shit oh my god i did why haven't we noticed that before it came from this sentence here this um this one tiny sentence the money was paid but Tate denied receiving it and failed to return one third of the drugs haul. So when I read that, I was like, hang on a minute. It sparked a few things. One being this third. There are how many thirds are in this? Like there was it? Isn't there rumor that he didn't give a third of the money back? Uh, that Pat didn't give a third of his cannabis back. And also, isn't there another that John Stone was saying, at least a third of it was all right. I'm more than sure that you'll find all that's correct. Third, third, third. Isn't that a bit coincidental, a little bit uh, off when you think about it and realise could be a little bit of bullshit going on there. Chinese whispers, a little bit of a mix up. A third, a third, a third. Isn't that a look a little bit of coincidence? That was one thing that sparked. Second being... The reason why I'm making this video right here, right now, is because he did return his drugs. He did, and actually, he was repaid fully for it. For for he was reimbursed for it. Now, and just to summarise, this is what I'm talking about, right? This dud cannabis did go tits up, and eventually, it is what got Tony Pan Cray killed, and. Actually, it was Mick and Nichols who got them killed, but accidentally. So let's go from the start. That's where the idea comes from. That's why I just wanted to show you that. That's exactly where it came from. That there, the, the, the uh, Tate denied receiving the money, and he returned, and, and he failed to return one third of the drugs haul. Right? I've got proof that he did. It's always been well known that he did as well. Let me show you. 
Again, right here, right now, it's very important to stress that I'm not trying to say this is the truth. It is, for me, personally, what I personally believe the truth. This is what happened, as far as I'm concerned, as it stands today, right here now. Mick and Nichols have got Tony Pound Craig killed accidentally because of this dirt cannabis deal. It's that one word, isn't it, accidentally, that actually brings a completely different story to it. I hope this makes sense because something's resonating in me that actually this it has to be the truth. We'll see anyway, let's have a look. Let's go from the start, okay, so this you're seeing on your screen is Donna Jagger's statement. And it's right here, she starts going into who paid what. She says Craig put in £7,000, Tucker put in £20,000 and Tate and a fourth person called Barry Dorman were putting in the remainder of the money. We've been through these details a number of times. If you are unfamiliar, please go and have a look at the Dutch Firm Part 1 and 2, maybe 3. I, one of those. Uh, all the details of this are in that series. We will have to swing back to and from this statement. But one thing uh, I want to look at is this. Okay, so... The, the, they've paid for it, it's gone to this up, it's coming back that it's shit, so they are now looking to give it back and get their money back, basically. Uh, the, by pressure, uh, Tate's putting pressure on Mick Steele, and by pressure, it's intimidation. He's a big bloke, uh, and you know his pet name is Herc, as in Hercules, so you can imagine the size of him, and... He's saying that uh, Steele finally agreed to return the cannabis and get their money back. Tate, in a fit of temper about the whole affair, smashed each slab before it was returned. It's very important to put to get to get this straight here. Look, um, before it was returned, she's even Donna Jaggers is saying that he's returned it. He returns this whole amount, okay. He smashed each slab before it was returned. Steele had told them that the parcel was the same size and been picked up by mistake. And that's how the problem had come about. I'm not certain, but I think on this occasion, Steele had to collect the cannabis from Tucker's home address in order to return it. Steele arranged to hand the money back to them on the continent. So by that, the it's already been picked up. Mick Steele has already phoned and got in contact with the Dutch firm, John Stone over there in Amsterdam. And he's made arrangements for it all to be picked back up. And this is what Donna Jaggers knows from Craig, I'm assuming. I doubt it would be anybody else who's told Donna this information. So by now, all of that in that one time, two sentences is all the cannabis is being picked up. And all the money is being paid back and the arrangements for how they're going to get this money back to them all in the one little bit, that segment. But it is being returned, that's the important bit. Okay, so that was Donna Jaggers and now we're going to look at what Darren Nichols says about that bit, okay? That, 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 that bit of the episode of the story. Okay, so as before, we're just move, simply moving on to this bit where the, 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 the cannabis has already come back. It's crap. It's been seen as. And um, we're moving into the bit where Pat's going mad. Oh, no, not that far yet. But look, the sale of my drugs here on this occasion didn't go smoothly. Uh, I did receive contact from people I sold drugs to. And as a result, I thought the drugs were no good. I phoned Mickey Steele about these drugs and told him they were no good. He was surprised and said, come over and see me and take some more. I did go and see him. I met him outside the pub in Great Bentley. He gave me more drugs wrapped differently to the previous lot I had. I took to the drugs back to Braintree and tried to sell them. These were the drugs he gave me outside the pub. I wasn't successful in selling these drugs. They were also rubbish. So I phoned Mick and told him. He said other people had complained and that I should come and see him again. So I went back over again. He gave me all the drugs he had and uh, see if any of them were any good. I got people I know to smoke them to test them as I don't smoke drugs. My belief after doing this was that they were no good. 
I spoke to Mick and told him and he asked if I would look after them for now and then he rang John Stone uh, and he says I was not there. He told me he rang John Stone. He said John said surely not they're okay. Mick insisted they were crap. He said John said he would ring him back which he did and told him he was really sorry there had been a mistake. He insisted that one third of the drugs were good. Pat Tate had complained as well as saying his drugs were no good. And he was bringing back, he was bringing them back. So Mick got them back and gave them to me. But Pat didn't give back as much as he took. And there was about a third missing. Right, now this is where these, this coincidence is also happening. So John Stone, this is proof. John Stone says, look, surely not, they're, they're not crap, they're all right. At least a third's all right. And then later, Pat Tate hasn't given his back, and at least a third of his are missing. Isn't that, first of all, a little bit suspect? A third are good. Oh, also, a third have gone missing. If we're going to look at this as a little bit sinister, as like... A, Darren Nichols being a little bit sneaky. Doesn't that come across that he's kind of blaming Pat for nicking the good third? Not really what we're talking about, but that is one aspect here that's worth thinking about at least. John Stone says a third were good. Pat Tate didn't give a third back. Pat Tate's not here to back any of that up. Worth thinking about. Now this is where it gets uh, interesting. As a result of that, as a result of Pat Tate not giving all of it back, by the way, as a result of that, John Stone said Mick could have his money back. And Mick would have the drugs back. Right, now we need here, we need to look at what he's saying here. Now, we understand and we know, we have knowledge that he has... That Darren Nichols has changed his statements over and over and over the like 26 times 28 26 or 28 times there he says Mick would have the drugs back he says as a result of this John Stone said Mick could have his money back and Mick would have the drugs back personally I think he means John would have the drugs back although he doesn't say that that's just me guessing I'm speculating but it doesn't make sense and this is the reason it doesn't make sense because later on he says that John says he will have the drugs back. And he says it here in court. We have been through this in the uh, video what really happened, the details. One of those episodes has this in it. Oh no, sorry, no, that, that's completely wrong. The, the videos... Uh, the the cross-examination of Darren Nichols is the, one of these videos that this is in. This is them talking in court, uh, cross-examining Darren Nichols. And here, look, he says, as he's being questioned, going from that there where it's highlighted blue, it says, my lord, I ought to ask one question. Mr. Nichols, have you, now I've asked you, remembered anything else about the conversation that took place at Stone's Bar with Mr. Stone when you came to get the money back. Can you remember anything else that was said? He answered, yeah, it was agreed that I'd meet someone to give him the drugs back. Did Mr. Steele, this is the question I want to ask you, ask Mr. Stone how he, Mr. Stone, knew or believed that a third of the cannabis was good? No, I don't recall. Because there was no doubt that that was what Mr. Steele had been told. Yeah, he was told that like John Stone said that a third of it was good. Yes. When do you say he was told that? Are you talking about in Amsterdam or some other time? No, when we first thought it was bad and John Stone was saying no, 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 a third of it was good, I'm sure sort of thing. When you got there, was there a conversation to the effect that you are not having all your money back because a third of it was good? No. So Stone was going to give back the lot, having told Mr. Seal that a third of it was perfectly good. 
I don't recall him going on about it afterwards. Mr. Steele said he was giving all the drugs back anyway. That never happened, did it? No, it never. He knew, Mr. Nichols, that he was not going to give all the drugs back because you told us last week that he was not going to take responsibility for shipping them back to Amsterdam. That's right. Someone was meant to collect them. These drugs were not in their original form at all, were they? I don't understand, Nichols says. They had all been broken, but they were still drugs. As I understand your evidence, you have been hunting these drugs around Essex and goodness knows where else and being told they were to use your phrase, shit. They couldn't be collected up and put some in bags and taken to Stone's Cafe, could they? No, they'd been broken, yes. Okay, so you get the gist there, don't you? That it's what would seem here, this bit here, uh, as a result that John Stone said Mick could have his money back and Mick would have the drugs back. That Mick there should be John, shouldn't it? Surely John would have the drugs back. Like I say, we have to go with what's being said here. And he says Mick, but I'm more than sure that's supposed to be John. Mick will have the money back. John will have the drugs back. You see, all the way through this bit here, the concept of bringing them back, Darren Nichols actually says that they were going to collect them from England. So the, it's telling us here that they were going to have these, the, the, all of this dud cannabis back. Anyway, look, whether John Stone wants them back or not, it, 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 you, you, you've heard it yourself. That, that's basically what he says. And it's important to know that. It goes on here, though. It says that Mick and Nichols keep them and have them and put them in the back of this car. Here, look. It says that Mick asked Darren Nichols to look after the drugs. Okay, so it's all come back. It's found out of shit. It's all come back. Mick's phone, John. John says he want, he'll have it back. And you can have your money back. That's fair enough. Mick, with Nichols, says, look after them. Mick says to Nichols, look after them. And he says here, look, I bought a cheap, I, 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 I bought a cheap car with MOT intact and put them in the boot and park. He says I agreed to go abroad with Mr. Steele and I went with Mr. Steele and it was uh, within a week that we went back. We travelled from Harwich to the Hook of Holland and got the train to Amsterdam Central. So they're in Amsterdam and they've got these drugs in the back of the of the car okay and then it goes on it doesn't say anything else about the cannabis then it goes on 30 to 35 thousand pounds was given back by john stone and that went into the safe in the room and then another 40 to 45 thousand came the next day and then the rest came in gilders overall we've been through this it says that John Stone gave all the money back. That's exactly what it goes on to say here. And it's also mentioned in the video called What Really Happened, The Details, one of those episodes. It goes into a little bit more detail about this. I'm going to go back to that in a second. But it's important to notice that he doesn't say anything else about that cannabis. He's got it in the boot in his car, but he doesn't say anything else about it here in this statement under oath. John Stone pays him back in sterling and then he can't get any more sterling so he has to pay him back in guilders. Mick doesn't want that, he wants it all back in sterling but eventually gives in to that to say, he's okay, guilders will do, he'll have to do. He's getting pissed off with hanging around so he'll take guilders. Okay, so now as I say, we've got to swing back to these little details that we go through in the videos called What Really Happened, The Details. It's vital that we do this because it tells us the amount of bad cannabis there actually was. 60 kilos of bad cannabis he stored in a vehicle parked up somewhere and he was told by Mick to throw it away or dispose of it. Now look, very, very important. Originally, it had been meant to be given back to the Dutchman, but Mick's, Mick had said when they were being followed in Amsterdam, fuck it, we won't give it back to them throw it away so we've just learned that they it's in the car that they've gone to take it back with john to get with, with to, when they're getting their money back they've taken the cannabis back as arranged 
as we've just learned, they were supposed to be coming to pick it up from England, but they don't. They take it over to Amsterdam. It's in the back of the car. This back, it, it, look, it says here, Mick said, throw it away. Nichols threw the cannabis away in the arc sand pits at Braintree. Now look, this says most of the bars were broken because Nichols started to check to see if it was any good and broke them in half. Don't forget that Pat Tate also broke his in half. Coincidence? Now look, I know this is all complicated and it's supposed to be. This is the accident. This is the accident that I'm talking about. It is complicated. And this is what's got them locked up. It's complicated on purpose. I'm not making it complicated. It just is. That's the way it's all fallen into place for Mick and Jack. Because look, this is Pat's deal. This is Pat's money. This is all Pat's doing. He's the one who's put in the most for this cannabis. Yes, they've all chipped in, but Pat's put in the most. They even call it Pat's deal. £125,000 of Pat's money. Anyway, moving on, it goes on to say, look, that Steele said that because Pat Tate never returned any of the drugs and John Stone swore blind that one third of the cannabis was good, Steele thought that Pat had sold a third of them and had had John Stone over, meaning, of course, pulled a fast one over him. So look, you can see here, this is really confusing how this has got so confused. Look, Pat, this is Steele talking. Steele is now saying that Pat didn't give any of it back. You know, we've had it all along that he did. It's all been given back to them. The only reason John Stone is giving back the, the money is because they're taking it all back. But again, don't forget, this is the word of Darren Nichols only. Mick Steele hasn't said this. This is Darren Nichols. Again, it's changed. Pat Tate did give it back, but now it's saying that Steele said that... Well, Steele didn't say that. No, Mick Steele hasn't said this, but it's said that Mick Steele has said that Pat Tate never returned any of the drugs. But look, he gives all the money back. And this is what I'm talking about, accidental look. Because Mick Steele will have had to have said to John Stone that Pat Tate didn't give those back. You know why? Because they've dumped them. They've dumped them. They dumped them in the Ark pits. So John Stone wants them back, but they haven't got them. They haven't got them, they've dumped them. So... Off the top of his head, he's saying here, look, that he, he had to tell John Stone something. The only thing that he could come up with is that Pat didn't give them back. He's saying here, look, that he's, he's saying that Pat has done John Stone over. But he, no, this isn't true. None of that's right. That he, Pat hasn't done that. Pat hasn't had anyone over. But look, they, they wanted that back. They wanted it back, but it's been dumped. Right, John Stone has been forced to give all his money back, right? And John Stone is out of this whole deal. He's got none of it back. None of this cannabis has gone back to John Stone. Can you see what I'm saying? None of it's gone back to John Stone. John Stone's had to give all the money back. And Steele is saying that Pat has had John over. But that's not true. They've dumped the cannabis. That's why they're saying it was Pat. Because they've dumped it. And look, it was their own decision. You know, they thought they were being followed. So, they dumped it. They, they, you, you, we've just been through it. Fuck it. We won't give it them back. Let's throw it away. But this isn't one stupid, tiny, little amount of cannabis here. And look, we're talking John Stone here, right? John Stone... This whole cannabis deal messed up because they had this dud cannabis lined up with another parcel, another package, the same size, but they accidentally took the wrong one. They took the dud cannabis instead of the other one. They took the dud cannabis instead of the good cannabis. So what I'm saying is there's double the amount in just these two parcels, and it's mega amounts here. And we're talking half a million quid. Here's the proof that it was half a million. We've been through this as well. This is the statement from somebody called John Goldby. 
and this is the customers and excise national investigation service and this man has been in this area of expertise for 23 years blah 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 and he deals with uh, drugs uh, in the excess of one million pounds we've been through this like i say and this is them getting the, uh, the the cannabis out of the ark pits right and look here 142,000 grams of cannabis has a street value of 481,000 pound 4,700 uh, value of 15,000 and another 4,700 grams uh, with the value of 15,000 as well all in all the approximate value was five hundred thousand pounds worth of cannabis was fished out of the ark pits but look this is what mick is saying pat has done john stone over with you know what i mean it did that's that, that's what mick and nichols have told john stone they, 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 that's what they're saying that they've done that pat's done him over of five hundred grand's worth of cannabis when he hasn't it's there in this in this pond it, they've dumped it and then blamed pat and to make it even worse they've made john stone give them the money back does that make sense see what i mean by accidentally done it they've accidentally dropped pat in it they, they've blamed pat saying oh yeah well pat didn't give it his back he's done you over mate sort of thing and you never know, Mick must have also said, look, you've got to give us our money back as well. You know, Pat's done you over and he's demanding his money back. You've got to give us his money. So it's like they're now ripping John Stone off, but they're blaming Pat. Do you see what I'm saying? And it's like I'm saying, it's not a, shit, a, li a little shitty amount either. It's 500 grand's worth of cannabis. Right, just very quickly before I forget, I said at the start there's proof that Pat did give it all back. Look, this is what I mean by that. Okay, look, he's saying 60 kilos of bad cannabis were stored in the car, okay? Now, don't forget, John Stone is saying a third of what they took was good cannabis, right? And they're also saying that Pat kept a third of his haul. So this here, this 60 kilos here, right, is, uh, so, uh, so let's say Pat Tate didn't give his third back. So this 60 kilos is a third missing, right? So overall, the, 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 all the, all the dud cannabis, deer, uh, all this dud cannabis, 60 kilos plus a third that Pat's got, a third of 60 kilos is 20 kilos. So 80 kilos of dud cannabis overall here with them in this in i'm a little bit confused by this because they're in amsterdam with this 60 kilos okay so it should be 80 kilos but they're saying pat's had a third of it yeah so it should be 80 kilos but it's not right but they're in amsterdam okay forgive me for being a little bit confused i know this is a bit confusing but this is the reason why it's so fucked up right here look they're saying fuck it throw it all away throw it all away so there should be 80 but there's six they're, they're, they've got 60 it should be 80 but they throw it all away okay but look right they fish out 142,000 grams of cannabis 470 uh, 4,700 grams of cannabis and again 4,700 grams all equaling five hundred thousand pounds worth but turning that into kilograms i've already worked it all out so all of that together comes to 151,400 grams and in kilograms that's 151.4 kilograms this is far more than what they're saying a third of if they're saying pat tate hasn't given a third back they've dumped far more than that there isn't room for pat tate to not give it back do you know what i mean he has to have give it back in fact they've thrown away more than they've said they've done you know you could actually put another third on top of what they have said they've thrown away uh, uh, what they said Pat's taken 
and it still wouldn't add up to 151, 151 kilograms. It should be 80 kilos, okay? But another third on top of that is 100 kilos. There's still 51, 51 kilos extra in that pond. For them to say Pat Tate hasn't give it back, that's absolute bullshit. He has to have done. There is absolutely no way he could not have done. There's no way he could have taken a third. Because it's there, look. It's there in these figures. 151 kilos was fished out of the Ark Pits. That's what Darren Nichols and Mick dumped. So Pat has give it back. And that's what I mean by proof. He has to have done. There's no way that he couldn't have done. There's just far too much in that lake. And it is Pat's as well. <laughs> well, we've been through this as well. Look, I mean, it, 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 it's smashed up. Pat said, that he, Pat has said, wasn't it, Donald Jagger said that Pat smashed his up. And these that have been fished out of the Ark Pits were snapped in half. So it's considered that it was Pat's. All of it was Pat's. Or well, a lot of it was. But now they're saying... Here, uh, that uh, Darren Nichols did it just to see if it was good or not. So that's it. That's the the, the bottom line of this that I'm I'm giving you here. This the story of to summarise. Let's you know. Let's say it's the dud cannabis, the dud cannabis deal that went down. As all that story goes, is what got them killed, but accidentally. Mick and, well, technically, Mick and Nichols have set Pat up to get killed. Which isn't, that's the story as well, isn't it? That is that is the story. Mick has set Pat up to get killed. But this theory is actually saying he's accidentally done it. And he's done it because Mick and Nichols are at fault here. They realise they're at fault. The, the dud cannabis is shit. They know it's shit, so they dump it. Then they get on the phone to John Stone. He's saying, I'll have it back. How are they going to give it back? They can't give it back because they've dumped it. Okay, they've got a bit. They've, they've got 60 kilos worth. So they put that in the back of the car. And then they take that to John Stone. Right? John Stone is... They, it's said, isn't it, that they, they don't give that back. So they dump that as well. Okay, but they force John Stone to give him the money back. They give all the money back. He, he, he gets John Stone to give all the money back, which he does, fair and square. But it must be, mustn't it, that, jo that Mick has said, imagine the conversation, where, where's the gear? Like, where's it all gone? They've dumped it. They can't tell him they've dumped it. So what are they going to say? Oh, Pat, the fucking Pat didn't give it us back. He didn't give it all back. So then John Stone's obviously, what the fuck are you saying? They, they've ripped us off. Mick says it himself, doesn't he? He's had him over. So Mick has accidentally told, well, accidentally on purpose, I suppose, to get himself out of the shit he's in for dumping it. He's told John Stone that Pat didn't give it back. So now John Stone and the Dutch firm have gone after Pat, Tony Pat and Craig, for ripping him off £500,000 worth of cannabis. That is something to kill him for, isn't it? That amount. You can't get away with robbing that. But the thing is, they haven't. The, Tony Pancray didn't rob it. Mick told John Stone that they did. And he only told them that because he dumped it. He was in the shit because he dumped it. Does that make sense? So it is that dud cannabis deal. It all drops into place. It, it Mick did set him up. Mick, Mick did set Pat up, but did Mick kill him? No way. That was that. That and this is it, isn't it? I mean, why would Mick want to do that? There's no need for Mick to do it. I don't know. I'm not sure about there being a drug deal. There's no setup of a drug deal in this theory. There, there isn't. Although there could be. You know, it could just be another cocaine deal. That's happening out of the way, down the lane, out of the way, and you know Mick is there. I don't, I, I don't believe Mick was there. I, I simply don't believe. Let's go on to this next bit, okay? I know that all that's a bit confused. I'm really confused. I don't know if any of it's going to make sense to you. I hope it does. Let me just go on to this next bit, okay? So this kind of goes. Uh, 
to, to who did it? Let me show you. Okay, we're moving on to this document here. Now, this is a document sent to John Worms, okay? And it's regarding O'Mahony as the Rettenden murder suspect. I'm um, still to go through this. I've promised myself I'm going to do it. I'm going to make a series of videos on it, just reading it out, because it is quite important, really. Uh, I made a video, of a silent video, so that the viewer could actually read it yourselves, but it doesn't, it, it doesn't work, so I've got to read it out. Um... It's, it's of interest because this is, I mean, this is actually considering Bernard O'Mahony to be the murder suspect. Um, it actually starts, look, uh, it's beyond belief that police failed to fully investigate Bernard O'Mahony in connection with the Redden murders. So you can see from just that sentence how interesting this is. Uh, it's... It actually goes on about the uh, some of the stuff that Bernie's written in his books. So Bernie talks about himself being that key member of the Essex Boys firm, Tucker's firm. He tells you of the uh, the setup they have, the role he played, the debts he collected, the maimings, the shootings, the stabbings, the fights, the brawling, the doors. All of that, all in his books. Please do go and purchase the books if you're interested in what Bernie has to say. Although he has made a good series of videos and uh, where he's just talking. You don't have to read anything. Uh, if you're lazy like that, go and listen to them. They are good. Opinionated, I would say, but you know that's just my own personal opinion on it. I would say a lot, a lot of it's true. Go and have a listen. I don't know. Anyway, this document is saying, it talks about, it's from somebody who's given, who's written this for John Worms, okay? I still don't know who it's from. It, it's not labelled and headed from anybody. And it's a document sent to John Worms. So, uh, it goes on and says, look, that Bernard O'Mahony has said that he was in this Range Rover, okay, in Rettendon, looking for cannabis in a pond. Okay, it's only a tiny bit, but it does say it, look. It says uh, th uh, that, um, uh, and by the way, this is saying that th th Bernard O'Mahony has written this in one of his books. Most of this is talking about Bernie's books, look, like page 156 in the book called uh so this is ecstasy and look it says uh he writes of an atmosphere of evil induced by paranoid drugs and mistrust L look here um he, sa he says he told tucker and everyone else that he'd moved to, Sa to saffron walden but we have since learned he moved to s um to, to maryland Mayland House, Mill Road in Chelmsford, Essex. This is approximately five miles from the murder scene at Rettendon. Tucker had arranged a welcome home party for Tate at a Dagenham Snook Hall, but O'Mahony, much to Tucker and Tate's annoyance, snubbed it. Um, and that's on page 162. If you've got your books ready and have a look, you'll know what this is saying. Uh, by his own admission, he says, look, O'Mahony discussed visiting Rettendon with Tucker and Tate that week. The purpose for that visiting, according to O'Mahony, was to look for £500,000 worth of cannabis that had been dropped in a lake in that area. Does go on to say that the police had recovered it, but O'Mahony claims that Tate thought there may be more which lay undiscovered. Okay, now listen, the, how important and how thought-provoking is that? They're in Rettendon looking for £500,000 worth of cannabis. There's been dropped in a lake. Mick and Nichols have already dumped £500,000 in a lake. Doesn't it seem on the face of things that this is pretty obvious here that they've told Tucker and Tate that that £500,000 worth of cannabis that they've dumped is in Rettendon. So they're looking for it. You see what I'm saying? That's the reason they're there that night. They're looking for this £500,000 worth of cannabis. See what I'm saying? Makes sense, doesn't it? So, why are Mick and Jack innocent? 
because only Nichols, Nichols is the only person who admits to being there. So who's he with if it's not Mick and Jack? Okay, this is a statement from somebody called Colin Bridge. We have been through this before in a lockdown short. Um, and it's actually suggested in that lockdown short that this could be the killer. Now, this, as all these details have come through and come to light, and it's dawned on me the realization that actually, you know, what happened, you know, what I've been looking at is the truth. It's dawned on me that this could be it. This is so. Darren Nichols has is he's the only one who's admitted to being out of that lane that evening. Okay, we look. We don't even know if it was Tony Pan Craig who turned up that at that point in time. Okay, we know they were found there, but we don't know what time. Okay, Mick and Jack say they're innocent. It's believed that they are innocent. Okay, uh, they say they weren't there. D Jack says he was down the road picking up a car. Okay, Mick said he was in a place called Bullfan, Bullvern, Bullfan, Bull, what, Bullvern or Bullfan? I don't know how to pronounce it. Um, got mixed, mixed messages about that pronunciation. Bullvan, Bullfan. I'll do. But Darren Nichols insists he was there. And it's come to light also, recently he says he was with two people. He's actually told people whilst he's in prison under this witness protection that he was with two people. He dropped two people off, picked three people up. He also says that he was working in Sunbury Thames that day. Okay. And this is a statement from somebody called Colin Bridge, who was the van driver in this cannabis deal that got them arrested, that eventually got them arrested for murder. This is Colin Bridge recalling his memory, saying that he, the last time he travelled with Darren Nichols to Sunbury Thames in company with three others who were Clive James, Franny Reed, and another male, I believe, was a friend of Darren Nichols, whose name I do not know. I can only describe him as male, white, six foot two, tall, stocky, sorry, six foot two tall, stocky build, who's about 40 years old. He had a stubble growth and may have been a plasterer by trade. I have known Clive James for about two and a half years. He was a friend of Darren's who lived around the corner from Darren. I've also known Franny Reed for about two and a half years. Again, through Darren, I only met the third male. I have described on a couple of occasions in December 1995. I would be able to recognise him again. I have not seen this third male since December 95, which is convenient. But I, I cannot recall his name. That's also convenient. Doesn't know his name. Can't grass him up. But this is who Darren Nichols is saying he's with, okay? We've been through it just recently in the Witness Protection, talking to Darren Nichols' series. Darren Nichols was boasting, wasn't he, that he's involved in this murder. And the two people, if I remember right, two people say that they specifically remember Darren Nichols saying he took two people to that lane. He took two people there and picked three people up. He's with three people all day. Two people he knows, one person he do and this Colin Bridge doesn't know. The person who is this man doesn't know is six foot two tall he's the same size as pat tate okay now do you recognize this video this is my video i made this video a long long time ago if you haven't seen it it's called shoe sizes this goes through the sizes of the shoes that we assume the police found at the scene be around the Range Rover, there's two sets of footprints, okay? One's a trainer and one's a boot. I'm not going to dig out all the information I already went through in that video, but basically, listen back to this tiny bit here. It says, I say in it that uh, this is the high-tech, the basketball boot, right? And 
it's measured out there, as you can see on the screen, it's measured out with the ruler, okay, and the ruler is, ruler, ruler, the ruler, it's measured out, and it's about 31 centimeters, and it goes on to say that uh, 31 centimeters is nearly off the chart look it's like size 15 uh give given give or take a few centimeters so 29 30 31 centimeters size 15 here on the uh okay there look so that that column there is the uk size and um it was 31 centimeters so it's like 14 and a half that was what it was suggested is the size of this shoe now no matter how you cut it the, we're talking a big man a big bloke needs to fit in these shoes you know what i mean these it's a 14 and a half size shoe a tall big man colin bridge is telling us that Darren Nichols was with somebody who was a tall, big bloke all day, that day. See what I mean? So, let's piece that bit together. Tony, Pat and Craig have been told this cannabis has been dumped in that lake. In one of those lakes in Rettendon. Bernie tells us that. It said, that's what Bernie's saying. He was in Rettendon looking for it. Okay, so Tony, Pat and Craig think... £500,000 worth of cannabis is in Rettendon, okay? It's this cannabis deal that Darren Nichols has dumped. Of course, Darren Nichols knows where it is. He's told Tony Pan Craig it's there in Rettendon. Darren Nichols is with the people who are going to kill Tony Pan Craig. This bloke who is not mentioned, his name isn't mentioned, but this is him. This is the bloke. We've got his footprint. We've got his size. Darren Nichols is with him. He's with him all day. He fits the bill. Do you know what I'm saying? They're all in Rettendon looking for this cannabis. This is it, isn't it? It's got to be. They all go to that lane. Tony Pan Craig's been told to go there. That's where it is. They're looking for the cannabis. It's 500 grand's worth. So of course they're going to go for it. And Nichols is with these people who kill Tony Pan Craig. Whether it's something to do with the, it, it's the, the, the Dutch firm. They've sent them over. You know, because this is the Dutch firm's cannabis eventually. Do you know what I'm saying? It, 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 he's given all the money back for this cannabis. But Tony Pan Craig still want to rob it. They, they've dumped it. Now that they've got the money back for it. Now they want to rob it again. You know what I mean? So that's it. That's the setup. The Dutch firm have sent this bloke over with Nichols saying, right, do them. If they go and get that, if they, if they, if they even attempt to take that cannabis... After we've given the money back, do them. That's it. Nichols says they're after it. They want it. What should we do? Tell them that it's there in that pond. There. In that field in Rettendon. They all turn up. They're going to rob it. It's not theirs to rob. It's the Dutch firms. You see what I mean? And bang, bang, bang. Of course they're going to get fucked for it. Mick and Jack weren't there. Darren Nichols still may have taken these people up there. But they're Darren Nichols' mates. You know what I mean? So he's, of course he's not going to grasp them up. He's going to grasp the people who have got all in trouble in the first place. Which is Mick. You see what I mean? It's all to do with this cannabis. This dud cannabis deal. But it's fucked up. They've accidentally got Pat in trouble in the first place. By saying he didn't give it all back when he did. You know what I mean? And now that Tony Pound Craig are trying to rob it back. After getting the money back. You can't not say that that isn't the way he went down. You know what I mean? I, I mean, I, again, I've got to stress. It, it's, I'm not saying it is the truth. Personally, I think this is it. This has to be, don't it? I mean, think about that. Think about it. Break that down. Let's summarise that again. 
Mick and Jack have fucked... Well, sorry, it's habit. I say Mick and Jack. Mick and Nichols have done this dud cannabis. It's shit. So they've dumped it. John Stone wants it back. But they've dumped it. So what are they going to say to John Stone? They're gonna, they need an excuse. Okay, let's say Pat didn't give it back. So they say Pat didn't give his back. But they they have to, but they thought they have to get the money back because Pat's going mad. Pat is going off his head. You get this money back. There's no choice. They've got no choice but to give him the money back. So they do, and then that's it. Then they they, they go in. They've done. You know what I mean? It's so conf it's confusing. But they they so they've dumped it, and they, they on that night on the sixth they try to find it again. It's all there. <laughs> I'm, I'm confused. I, I don't want to spoil what I'm trying to say here by going off on one. You know what I mean? I'm really trying to keep my cool, but I personally think this is it. This has to be it. And it's and the reason why we haven't been able to see it is because it is the way it said hap it happened with just those minor twists and turns. You know what I'm saying? <sighs> Does that make sense? Does any of that make sense? I hope it does. Uh, I'm there in my line of thought the saying this is the truth. This is what happened. It is that the cannabis and it isn't Mick and Jack who killed them. Darren Nichols was with the people who killed them because they were going to rob that cannabis back. Does that make sense? See what I mean? I hope you enjoyed that guys. If you've got any questions, anything to say about that, join in, in that conversation, that discussion, please leave it all down below. I love getting back to you all. I love reading it all. And uh, I hope you enjoyed that. I'll see you next time. If there is a next time, I don't think they're really... I don't know where to go from there. I feel that that's, that's what happened. I appreciate your time, guys. I'll see you in the next one if there is one. Take care of yourselves. Please, there's uh, this coronavirus is still about it's doing everybody's head in, um, but to do whatever it takes to look after yourselves. Bless.